Well, Merry Christmas. Today is the fourth day of Christmas, and the three days following Christmas are three major kind of saint feast days in the church. Um, right on the heels of Christmas, we kind of usher in various martyrs, those who were for the Lord. And today, a rather uh, very pungent one, very potent one here, and uh, we have the Day of the Holy Innocents, uh, those who were killed in Bethlehem uh, for the sake of our Lord as he was able to escape from, to Egypt. Um, we'll be following along today for the service of evening prayer, which you can find in your hymnals on page 297. So we'll follow along there. And we'll also be singing the hymn. It's uh, not in your hymnals, but it's a beautiful hymn that's commemorated for this day called Sweet Flowerets of the Martyr Band, um, that sing of those who died for Christ, these little infants and children of Bethlehem. And so today on page 297, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of, of the, the immortal, immortal Father, Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we, we have come, come to the setting of the sun, and we, we look, look to the evening light. We, we sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. We now continue with singing the hymn, Sweet Flowerets of the Martyr Band. first of three readings today for the day of holy innocence begins with the prophet Jeremiah chapter 31. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Thus says the Lord, Keep your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. For there is a reward for your work, declares the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope for your future, declares the Lord, and your children shall come back to their own country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 14. Then I looked, and behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand who had his name and his Father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps, and they were singing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the elders. No one 
could learn that song, except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. It is these who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb. And in their mouth no lie was found, for they are blameless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading today for this day of holy innocence comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. When the wise men had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. And he sent and killed all the male children of Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old and under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who escaped Herod's sword in order to be killed for you. On this day of holy innocence, I think out of all of the days and saint days that are marked on the church calendar, this one's always a little bit of a hard one. Um, it certainly speaks not uh, unknown to our world, for sure, and unknown to the scriptures. You, you'll remember throughout the most of the Old Testament, that the people of Israel, that they contained with them the promised Messiah, the Christ. And so when they went into Egypt and became many and multiplied and filled the, the land of Egypt, the king of Egypt was worried and concerned that they would take over. And so his goal then was to kill all the male babies that were born of the Hebrews. Now behind all of this, of course, is the spiritual warfare at play, that Pharaoh is killing the male children, but behind it is the dragon, the serpent, who is looking to destroy the promised seed and Messiah. Today in our Gospel reading, the same war continues. The male child, the one who has been prophesied to come to restore and fix everything that has been broken, he has been born. Christ has come. And yet, when news of this reaches the, the powers that be, this is concerning. They see it as a threat to their throne and to their reign, which, to King Herod, Christ hasn't come to take over being a king of this world. He has come to be king of all the nations, and he will supplant the kingdoms of this world. But he doesn't come for some pity little petty kingdom that Herod reigns over. He comes for all. Herod, he wants to put an end to this. And so he had sent the wise men when they had come, asking, where is this newborn king? He had sent them off to Bethlehem to find the child. The wise men, of course, had found him, and they depart. But then they are told to go a different path. Herod, of course, finds out about this later on, a bit later, and he's upset, he's furious, and he's angry. And so he decides that he's going to put an end to this child. And he now goes to kill all of the babies that can be found in Bethlehem, two years and under, and in the surrounding region. This is probably done because he wants to make sure he got the child, even though he doesn't know who he is. And probably from the time, tells us that Christ is anywhere from two years and under. But this is horrible. The slaughter that happens. And it's almost unthinkable that Christ escapes, but maybe the objection that we raise is, why not all of them? Well, I think we could probably still ask that question. Why not all of them? The abortion that rages in our country, the millions that have been put to death, men and women, children, all of it, for the sake of greed, for the sake of security and well-being, for the petty kingdoms of this world. And yet, Christ has come, and he has escaped. 
I love, I think, our book from a reading from Revelation, while it maybe doesn't have the holy innocence directly in mind, helps us see that through the slaughter, there was one who escaped, the one who came to die our death, the one who came to die the death of the holy innocence, the one who is himself innocent, without blemish or blame, and came to die for these children, for the children still today in our midst, and for every man, woman, and child, for all sins of the world. He made it. For that, there is thanks be to God, because through Jesus Christ, it's not just a, another death, but it is a death that brings renewal, a death that promises new creation, a death that will fix and cure all the ills of this world, destroy death in the grave, and raise those to life. You see, the point of Jesus Christ making it is that the threat of the promise, the threat of the seed has made it. And because he has made it, so too have the holy innocents. So too have our children. So too are those who have not seen the light of day. So too are you. You are tethered to Christ, who is the living one, who has triumphed over death in the grave. It's Christmas, but we certainly still say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. This was fulfilled not just for the sake of these holy innocents. This was fulfilled for your sake and for the sake of the salvation of the whole world. Because through Jesus Christ, one day, as it says there in the book of Jeremiah, keep your voice from weeping, your eyes from tears. There is a reward for your work and for the loss. They shall come back from the land of the enemy, from the land of death. There is hope for your future, declares the Lord. Your children shall come back to their own country. Those children in our text, the children in our midst still today, and we as well, we will come back to the land of the living because Jesus is in the land of the living and he promises and he guarantees it by his own blood shed for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue now by praying to the, our God and King, by praying the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we come before you and we plead for mercy and for grace, especially since the devil has not stopped attacking your image, whether it be by murder or abortion or by tragedy or by even ill will and attempt and murder. Lord, we ask that your blessing and that your life would be given to us that we, though we have murdered and hurt others with our hands and lips and hearts, that we would confess our sin to be forgiven and brought under your wings. Just like a mother who gathers her hens, so, Lord, gather us as your people, that we might rejoice and give thanks and be brought into the land of the living. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand, the day is spent. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas to you. Jesus Christ has triumphed for you. The Lord be with you on your day and we'll see you soon. Amen.